Our next guest, he's the definition of an A-lister, an Academy Award-winning actor who starred in over 100 films, including Hands of Stone, which is in theaters this Friday, where he plays Roberto Duran's legendary trainer, Ray Arcel. We welcome Robert De Niro to the show, and it is such an honor yes, to is. have you here. You have no idea. I'm thank you so, so clap much. Or something. I know, <laughs> seriously. So thank you so much for coming up to Bristol. Robert, what drew you to this project? Well, I, uh, I met Jonathan. He wanted to do the story. I liked him. I saw the movie he had done before. Um, and uh, I just got involved, and, and uh, that was it. You know, I, uh, and, and it took a long time to get the movie made because it was, it was supposed to be done in Puerto Rico with money from the Middle East, and that all fell through. So then I said, why don't you just call the Panamanian, get in touch with the Panamanian government, tell them you have... Uh, you have Durand behind the project, let them get some well-to-do Panamanians, give them tax breaks and let them put money in, da, da, da. So that's what they did, and that's how, how it should have been, really. The, the location, the whole thing, the actual gym where Durand trained, uh, Edgar Ramirez uh, trained there, and we shot scenes there. So it was, and it's unique, I mean, uh, so we were lucky that we went in that direction. What was the hook of Ray Arcel, the character of Ray Arcel for you? Well, he, he wasn't uh, the usual trainer. Uh, he was more like an intellectual. He was more cerebral. He, was, he had heart, but I mean, he was just uh, a guy who I, I met him once, maybe twice, when I was working on Raging Bull. And uh, I was impressed with his, the way he just carried himself, the whole thing. It was not like, uh, not, as I say, like a typical trainer that I've seen. And um, he, had a, he had over 20. Um, champions uh, and so it was uh, something that I wanted to do you know? I'm easy I'm, to decide that you know? I'm looking at your career and it's 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 amazing I've always obviously been an incredible fan and you've been acting since the early 60s for crying out loud I, I'm wondering what keeps you going what excites you in this day and age about doing what you do I, I enjoy, you know, sometimes in the beginning, you, 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 don't, you don't want to get up to, you get up to speed, but I felt that way 30 years ago with certain movies. And then once I'm in it, I'm in it, you know. You do, you're in it, and you want, you want the thing to be as good as it can be, uh, the scene, and, and so uh, that's, that's, that's it. Is there anything that you pinpoint from your acting at this stage and point of your career that you know you say this is why i get up and do this every day this is what's what, what do you find most enjoyable about what you're doing right now well if i if the scene is well written or even if it's or if it's well conceived and we're working it through even if all the dialogue is not totally written out yet and the director understands that uh uh, it's, you know, and the, the, the nicest thing is to see that the scene ultimately works after you've shot it and it's been put together. And uh, then even nicer is that the movie has some semblance of working uh, and so on. So, um, and I liked, uh, Jonathan ha has a way of, uh, we, we would shoot scenes through the dialogue and then he'd let the camera just keep rolling and we would just sort of add stuff but that's kind of like a gravy situation, and something could come out of that, which would be good, and it gives you a certain freedom, uh, and you can always cut it out or what, use a part of it. What do you think it is about you that, I mean, I, I remember a movie with Meryl Streep, I think it was called Falling in Love, yes. but, yeah. and, 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 and 19, Bertolucci's 1900, you weren't playing tough guys in those movies. No. So it's not that you only play tough guys, but a lot of the roles that you're most well known for are tough guys, mm -hmm. Raging Bull, Goodfellas, Godfather Part Two. What is it, Once Upon a Time in America? What, what is it about you, do you think, that gets you cast as the, that, that will lead you to those roles even? I don't know, I mean, I guess, uh, in some ways I, I do them well with, with, with zest, but they're fun to do, I like them. Um, we're doing a similar movie, uh, a similar, like a, uh, uh, Scorsese and I, um, based on a book called I Heard You Paint Houses. I mean, now it's titled The Irishman. I don't know what it'll finally be titled as. But uh, again, it's that world. But I'm, it's a world that uh, I like uh, doing from time to time. And, uh, that's it. Robert, I don't know if you know this, um, but you have an actor sitting right next oh, to you. Lord. I know, He's starring I in soap. He hasn't made <laughs> it to blockbuster to films yet. Please don't do this but to he, me. But he is at soap operas. General oh. Hospital. He has, He's he has acted a in recurring movies. role. Um, 
I, I, we just want to show you a little bit of a oh, clip of this okay. and kind of kind of get your thoughts here, if you could break it down, because Stephen A. has really embraced this this new career path. Um, if you could just see this right here. Oh Lord. So, it's Stephen A. Asbrick. We don't have the sound of it, but if you could just, even just looking at the body language expressions, what, what, what? is it? What exactly are you playing? I don't need that. I'm, I'm playing a character by the name of Brick. I'm a surveillance expert for the mob, Mr. De Niro. Any oh, okay. Tips? That's what Any I tips am. For him? I don't know why we don't have the sound, but that's neither here nor there. I'm glad we don't, because it would give me more room to be critiqued. I don't need any more. <laughs> I don't need any more room, sir. Trust me on that. He's still looking. You don't have to look. No, he, he's going to help you. He, he wants to see you succeed. Oh, my goodness. Arena. Oh, my goodness. Well, it looks pretty good to me. You know? <laughs> 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 we see we didn't have the sound because we didn't want to embarrass you too much, Stephen. So. What would Stella we Adler at... say about that scene? Oh, God. What's your action? I, I, um, but, you know, I, I have to tell you something. I, I saw the scene before and I saw the dialogue. I heard the dialogue. It was good. You did a good job. Wow. I couldn't complain. I, Any I don't tips know for him? Could. Hold on. Just keep on <laughs> hanging in there, kid. I need no. tissue. I need <laughs> tissue. This is a very touching moment for me. Thank you so much. You know, yes. let, Just let... don't be disappointed. Don't give up. Yeah, That's keep right. auditioning. Don't be keep disappointed. Auditioning. Don't give up. I'll keep up. I'll, 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 I'll keep plugging. I, I want to ask you because when you were doing this film, I'm a, I, you know, he's obviously the man when it comes to boxing, but I, I'm a huge boxing fan. and. Thinking about Roberto Duran, what did you peel from doing this movie about him and what he went through, what he endured? You know, the whole no mas thing and everything else. That's what we think about when we think about Roberto Duran. And he knows better than me, but he's one of the great, greatest fighters ever. But yeah. we think no mas. When we think, what did you get from being down there, how everybody feels about him in this day and age in light of everything that transpired? I think Roberto is okay. He's doing okay. You know, he bounced back uh, pretty well, uh, uh, all in all. And he's got a great energy, a great uh, joie de vivre, if you will. And uh, he's a very likable person. And, um, you know, it was something that happened, unfortunate as it was. Uh, but, you know, his life, I think, has been and everybody still respects him as a great fighter. You can't take that away from him no matter what he did. He took the, for whatever the reasons are, he said that he didn't say no mas, or this and the, he, whatever, you know. Yeah, it was no mas stuff. It was no mas. <laughs> yeah, no how do you, how do you separate yourself? Because you got to find, if you're playing Ray Arcel, this is Roberto Duran's trainer for those who are interested, That's right. who trained him for a big portion of his career through the no mas fight, but then not after that. And you have to have a point of view about that. And your character obviously was so disgusted that he walks away from Roberto Duran. And this is a guy who, who I don't want to give too much of the movie away. It's right. based on a true story, but you know, went up against the mob in a, in a, in a sense years before he had, he had uh, uh, handled Duran. How do you, uh, like, how does that affect your own judgment of Roberto Duran when you're playing a character who has such a strong point of view? And you got to find that as an actor, I imagine. Uh... So that, like, like, so, 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 how do you feel about Duran? <laughs> Does it color the way you feel about it? Because you're playing a guy who felt so strongly about No Mas. No, I mean, I'm playing a character, I'm, and I'm taking Ray Arcel's position, which I certainly there are many parts of me that can understand his position, and uh, plus, uh, he, he's a great character, one that it's easy to respect uh, and like. So. Um, that was, uh, and, and also feel the disappointment that when uh, uh, Duran did say or did walk away from the fight, you know, it's, uh, it was a, a, a devastating thing for him. Um, but it doesn't take away how much he cared about Duran and how much Duran cared about him and everything else, the right. respect he had for Duran. I want to ask you, Usher's in this film, obviously, yeah. and fabulous music artist, as a person, that has obviously perfected your craft and is considered one of the elite in this industry. What are your thoughts about whether it's a musician, whether it's, you know, an athlete, whether it's, it's, it's a daggone talk show host trying to do the kind of things that you guys do as actors? As, as an elite actor, what, are, what is an actor's opinion about those trying to come into your genre? You mean other actors? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just saying, I'm talking about people wanna trying be, to be wanna one. Be wannabe actors. Not other no, actors. You, I, always, I always say, anybody wants to be an actor, you should try it. I mean, I had, had a friend who was in his 30s and his, would mean changing his whole life. And uh, uh, he was in the business world and so on. And I, 
I said, well, try it, you know, I'll help you in, in sort of recommending people you can talk to, but you just have to have the will. If you want to do it, you do it. Yeah, in, in, in a real sense, you get little parts and, you know, mm -hmm. around your actual day job, you know, a, a night thing or an off-Broadway off, off type thing. You do it if you really want to do it. If you're not sure, if you think you're going to become successful at it, you're going to get, get a career out of it, <laughs> then don't do it. That's you know, right. That's yeah. a, that's, that happens if you're lucky, but don't do it for those reasons. Do it because you enjoy it. Yeah. That's all that you can get. I can only imagine the grind and commitment to be successful in uh, that field and level yeah. competition. Robert De Niro, this was such a treat. Been Thank you honor. so much. I'm sure you love being here in Bristol, Connecticut, but, but we appreciate you. <laughs> Kansas Stone in theaters Friday. We will be checking it out, so we look forward to that. Enjoy your time here. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, Josh Norman, he's never been too shy to speak his mind. Now he's going off on the commissioner, Roger Goodell. Did he step out of bounds this time? We react next. It's me. It's me. The real ones got you knowing the percent. It's me.